is up, y'all? It is your boy Weepealer back in the house with some more Clanimals War highlights with my Town Hall level 10. The base is looking good. We got another expo up to level 4. My AQ is now a 22, and we did do a few more walls. I'm very proud of this base. If you guys are at Town Hall 10 and need a good farming base, I would recommend this one. It does very, very good for me. Now, let's move on to our War Log. We lost four in a row until we finally won against the Hulas. The first one was Sofa King Bad. Those were the guys from Safe Haven. Very good clan and actually jumped into their clan after our loss and did a war with them and actually learned a lot on how to use my clan's strengths to attack instead of just generically saying, hey, everybody drop one base for your first attack. You know, you have to use your clan's strengths, know your attackers, know what they have uh, in store for the other guys and have them hit someone who is, uh, they're comfortable hitting and that seems to be the best way to do it and that's what happened against the Hulas. Uh, we came out strong. We were able to two-star all of their bases right out of the gate and they kind of gave up. So we will go into that. We won 22 to 13 average destruction was 70.3 percent i had a nice war bonus there at almost 900k of each and 4k dark elixir i'll go in and show you guys a few of our attacks uh, but i wanted to highlight that jack did not get hit and then my base and aimbot's base both are different this time around did get zero starred and that's actually a very very big point in this so let's move on to our attacks i'm going to go to my second attack actually on their number three it was really really good i even though it was only 59%, uh, let's pause this real quick, his base was not really that good. He had a couple defenses upgraded, but the key right here was the single Inferno Towers. Both of them set to one, very easily frozen in one free spell, and that's exactly what I did. I came in and lured out the clan castle with a couple hogs, was able to knock out that low-level archer tower and uh, make sure he wasn't going to be shooting or she wasn't going to be shooting on me during the actual raid. was able to move all these guys up to the top, luring them with a barb, I believe a couple barbs just to get them up into the top corner. And then my clan castle, which is a pre-made two level two witches, two level six wizards, and three barbarians. And I think I dropped another wiz. Yeah, a couple wiz right in there just to make sure the clan castle would be destroyed. Dropped one golem on each side. And basically it looks kind of like a general base, a little bit modified here. Uh, but basically I was going to go heavy on one side where the BK was since the archer queen is buried in the core. I only really have to take out the BK and basically go heavy heavy on one side with my P.E.K.K.A.s and uh, my heroes, and that's what I did on the right hand side. Was able to use a jump spell, actually really nicely placed, got them right into the center. I was hoping guys would be into the center core. I was hoping, actually let's pause this, I could have dropped it right on the mortar and gotten the wizards from the left hand side into the core as well. I was just very afraid that it wouldn't cover this much and that my P.E.K.K.A.s wouldn't get into the center, and I really needed them to get into the core to knock out the town hall, but free spell right there, taking out both Inferno Towers and really getting everybody into the core before they amped up again. Able to drop that second rage. I let them lock on to my guys for a very short amount of time and then froze them up again. Got them into the center. The Archer Queen goes down. The P.E.K.K.A.s are still going strong. So are my heroes. Drop that third rage spell into the center and they are just unbelievably smoking the center of that base very, very quickly. Expos go down. The other... Um, Inferno went down, we got the third expo down, and basically all we have are these Teslas on the outside that are taking fire upon my guys, uh, stuck behind the level 9 walls. Now, 59%, it was a very quick 59%, I didn't let my heroes go, uh, my Archer Queen, I think, did my Archer Queen die? I believe she might have gone down, but I wanted to keep my barb up, I knew I wasn't going to get uh, the third star, but... In hindsight, I probably could have gone a little bit differently attacking on this base and probably, oh, Iron Tree Queen is alive. Um, I probably could have done maybe a logo wipe or something with some hogs and knocked out these bottom uh, spots here since there's no spot for giant bombs. But it would be nice to attack a couple bases a couple times just to see what you got in store. But I'm happy with the two star and getting the loot right there. Uh, we're going to go with Iop on number four. And this is significant because she is a Town Hall level nine attacking a Town Hall 10. Now it is a lower level Town Hall 10 as far as the upgrades for her defenses go or his defenses go whoever is stone cold jones i'm assuming it's a guy uh, but he's got a level one inferno and a level two inferno on multi so she's going dragon and basically drag raids they soak up and sponge the inferno's shots and they're not going to go down quickly so it was a really good attack she came from the right hand side she dropped her heroes i believe on the bottom to clean up the builder huts and the um spell factory right there so she did a good job making the funneling uh, of the dragons happen right from the right hand side she came eastern uh, more toward that archer queen trying to keep the barb king away 
Uh, actually, they're not going to go even for the, uh, the drags anyway because uh, the Barb King can't take them out. So she did go on that side just to get the clan castle out, and then she moved them, I believe, over to the right-hand corner, if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe I am mistaken. She moved up. Let's see what happens. Speed it up just a little bit. And I want to see this uh, significant dragon drop. So right here, drop them all plus some balloons, able to take out the other spots just to get closer to the 50%. I believe that's why she had used them and to keep those wizards away from uh, the dragon. And that was a very good move. Rage spell right here on top of the, or, uh, the air defense, excuse me, keeping the balloons within it, the dragons within it, and making the uh, Inferno Tower basically sponge the dragons, which is great. The balloons are still doing okay. They did go down right there, um, but they're getting pulled back into the center, and it's working out really, really well. Uh, the heal spell, I got to tell her, though, next time around, bring another set of rages. Bring two more rages simply because heals do not work against Infernos, and you can see how long it takes for these dragons to go down against an Infernal Tower, and that's the wonderful thing. So, closing in on the 50%, closing in on the Town Hall as well. Very lucky that we had a second drag there. The first drag goes down. The second dragon here, they're going to take out the Expos and then turn on to the Town Hall. The other dragon still doing fairly well, though. The Inferno's not doing too much on him. And uh, the Wizard Tower, same thing. Just doesn't have enough oomph to really take him out. But the second dragon, the MVP right there, coming from behind. Town Hall had one hit left, and she was able to take it out. So beautiful, beautiful raid on a Town Hall 10 with dragons. You don't see that too often. I do see a couple failed attacks with dragons, sometimes even level 4 dragons. It's just not the way you want to go against a uh, Town Hall 10 because of a lot of high-level Teslas and a lot of... Uh, Inferno set to single. So great raid by her right there. 58% two star. And that was uh, really good because that freed me up to attack number three. Now let's move on down here. Scotty had a wonderful attack. We're going to replay it and pause it real quick. His army composition was absolutely flawless. He ended up bringing a little bit of almost everything. Lots of uh, wizards, a couple pekkas, a couple golems, and then these six hogs to help clean up. He did bring he three heal spells, which was fantastic. And it's a really, really wonderful uh, raid to watch. I was very, very pleased. I went back and saw the replay. I'm like, damn, man, this thing is freaking clinical. And uh, I think when he gets to upgrade his troops a little bit more, it's going to be even stronger, especially with the level 3 golem. So use the giant to draw out the clan castle, drop them down to the bottom uh, with an archer, and then I think he took them out. I think he might have just dropped his golem raid and then uh, brought in his... His cavalry behind it, if I'm not mistaken. He did clump them up pretty well right there, but I don't remember if he actually took them out. No, you know what? He did drop a couple wizards right there. That's perfect. Two on each spot. A couple shots from them, and basically, uh, GG. I mean, all the all the uh, CC troops went down real quick. So, Golem's coming in from the southwestern side, dropping the wizard in behind, or wizards in behind, to clean up those sides, as we always do with a Goite. A couple wall breakers on each corner of the wall. Breakthrough right there. Get both of his troops into the... Uh, first core right there, first compartment right there. Uh, Wizard's able to take out that gold collector which forces the P.E.K.K.A.s into the center. He did not bring a jump spell this time around. And we're seeing a lot of clans that don't use a lot of jump spells. They can use another extra rage or an extra um, heal spell right there. And the saving grace of that giant bomb was that he had a lot of wizards on either side of it so they weren't taken out which was a wonderful thing. Now this guy with his core, uh, the way it's set up, let's pause it. There was a mortar right here and actually dragged everybody into the center. A lot of times guys do these rings around the town hall in order to force troops to go around that core, but it did not work here because he had a defense that was really close to the edge of that core, and like I said, it dragged everybody into the center. Here come the hogs from the north, which is wonderful. Got a couple spots with an archer tower and a um, cannon right there. No spots for jumps. Uh, sorry, spring traps or uh, giant bombs, which is great. They're going to go on to the mortar next, and I believe they hit uh, and split. They go to the Archer Tower and the Tesla. It's a low-level Tesla right there, so that's a good job using them to clean up so that his troops don't get hit from the other uh, the other angle. So great. Hogs are still doing it, still alive right there. The BK, the Pekkas are doing great on the right-hand side. And uh, I'm telling you, man, if you can really utilize hogs in your army camps, go ahead and do that because they are great for cleanup. They knock out defenses on the opposite sides of your attack so that you can go ahead and continue your raid without taking fire from any defenses. And it just worked out really, really well this time around. So let's speed it up a little bit. The Archer Queen shooting that wall like she so often does. Taking out these builder huts, and then that's a great looking army right there. Following up, we've got a BK, an AQ, got a hog, we got a couple Pekkas, a couple archers, a couple barbs. It's looking good, man. And that is just a great looking raid right there. Anytime you can three star a base with a very good looking hybrid army, it's just really fun, good feeling, and it's, uh, you know, 
nice to nice to see. So excellent raid right there. Very happy with that three star. And we did good, man. Twenty two to thirteen. It went really, really, really the way we wanted it to go. So check out our current war before we get into it. We do have four town hall tens. We got Matt back in the uh, clan for this one. But look at our opponents. Okay, so they got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine town hall tens in a ten man war clan. A lot of them are low level, but still to come up against this many. That means all of these guys have Inferno Towers. I did go ahead and check that. And we've got four guys with Inferno Towers. So a lot of these lower guys in our group that do have uh, Town Hall 9s, it's a tough hit. You could probably get two stars on most of these guys, but getting three is going to be really, really hard. So hopefully we can go ahead and get extra stars on these bases from our top guys. If each one of our Town Hall 10s can two-star their eight Town Hall 10s, we should be good. If we miss uh, attack and only get one stars in a couple of these Town Hall 10s, it may be our demise. The hindsight and the saving grace, excuse me, of this is that most of these guys don't have good troops except the number one player. This guy, the second one, does not have high-level golems. Uh, this guy does not as well. This guy does not as well. I think, think this guy, same thing. So they all have low-level golems and not real high-level loons. So that means that this guy's got decent uh, troops. But basically, they're either going to air attack, probably dragons, or maybe a couple loons mixed in. Uh, maybe a couple go wipes here and there. But I really feel strongly about our chances, even though we're outmatched by Town Hall 10s. So thank you guys for watching. That is the video. Appreciate the like. Drop it down below, man. Really helps spread the video out. Uh, we'll get some more of this going. I think I have another Let's Play going up. We did uh, win our last war in weeps peeps and it's fun man so thank you guys i really appreciate you guys watching this and i'll catch you guys next time